So, we will discuss the mean value theorems, uh, Rose theorem, Lagrange's mean value theorem and Cauchy's mean value theorem, generalized mean value theorems. Uh, yesterday, we have discussed about the local maxima and local minima and we have seen a function f defined over its uh, interval all metric space x d x d f is a function which is real valued and defined uh, on a metric space a. then we say f has a local maxima at a point p if there exists a delta such that the value of the function at the point p is greater than the value of the any number q which lies in the delta neighborhood of p if it lies in the delta neighborhood of p and if the image of any point q is less than uh, all equal to the value of the function at p then we say function f attains or has a local a local maxima maximum at p if there exist p belongs to x if there exist a delta such that this inequality holds for all q belonging to this that a d of p q is less than delta similarly when you say it at, uh, has a f has a local minima at p belongs to capital x if if there exists a delta such that f of q is greater than or equal to f of p for all q with d of p q is less than delta so this is the case of local maximum or local minima and in intervals in a similar way when we say a function is has a local maxima or look at the point a it means there is a neighborhood x minus delta x plus delta such that whenever any point t lies in l then f of t f of t is less than or equal to f x for all t belonging to this range if it has a maximum local maxima and similarly for the local so with this we have a result which is useful in establishing the mean value theorems the result is let f be defined on a close in and bounded interval a b and if f has a local maximum at a point at a point x belongs to the open interval a b and if the derivative a prime x exists at this point then the derivative must be 0. So, what it says is <coughs> if the function attains a local maxima at a point x in the interval a b where the function is totally defined function is defined and also the derivative of the function at the point x is then derivative must be 0. Okay. The same case is the similar statements similarly if let f we define on the close interval say a b and if f h a local minima local minima at a point say x belonging to a b and if the derivative of the function exists at this point where it has a local minima then the derivative of the function is 0. So, this is the condition that at the point of local maxima or local minima if it attains and the derivative exists then the derivative must be 0. Okay. Let us see the proof of this. The proof is say 
suppose the function f which is defined defined on the closed and bounded interval a b has a local maxima maximum at the point x belonging to the open interval a b ok. Suppose let us see. So, what definition of this uh, by definition of the local maxima there exist a delta greater than 0 such that uh, such that the functional f of t will remain less than or equal to f x for all for all t belonging to the neighborhood of x that belonging to this that is this is the point x and here we are having the neighborhood x minus delta and x plus delta. So, if the function a attains a local maximum at this point a the corresponding to this we can identify a delta and a neighborhood such that whenever the t lies here then the value of the function is also less than equal to x or t lies here the value of the function will also be less than equal to f x. Okay. So, if suppose t lies between the left hand interval of x then the ratio f of t minus f of x over t minus x. Now, since t lies between this left hand interval and function attains the local maximum at the point x. So, f of t will be less than equal to f x. So, this part will be negative and t is less than x. So, again this part is negative. So, total is greater than equal to 0. So, this implies that limit of this as t tends to x of this quantity that is f of t minus f of x divided by t minus x which gives the derivative of the function at a point x is greater than or it cannot be negative. Therefore, the derivative f prime x is greater than equal to 0 this is the first part. Now, if the uh, t lies between this uh, interval right hand to, towards the right of x then the ratio f of t minus f of x over t minus x. When t lies here the f t is always less than equal to f x because x is the point a local um, maximum point and t is greater than x. So, this is positive. So, this will be less than equal to 0. Therefore, taking the limit limit as t tends to x of the same uh, f of t minus f of x divide by t minus x will be less than equal to 0 and that will imply the derivative of this is less than equal to 0. So, 1 and 2 combined will give you that derivative will be 0 at that point. So, if it is a local maximum the derivative exists then it has to be 0 there or if it is a local minima and derivative exists then it. But if the derivative does not exist then also the function may attain the max will attain uh, uh, the maximum minima also. So, that is <laughs> what we have the corollaries here um, as a corollary we can say the corollary says that if uh, that is if let r let f is a mapping from the i to r i is in interval be continuous be continuous on an interval continuous on an interval uh, i and suppose and suppose that f h a local extrema extrema when you use the word extrema means either local maximum or 
local minimum. So, a one word is used for that extimum. So, if it has a local extimum means either it has a local maxima or local minima. So, if it has a extimum at an interior point at an interior point say x belonging to i then either either the derivative derivative of f does not exist does not exist or it is equal to 0 if exist. So, this part we have already shown is it not that if the function attains the local maxima or local minima and if the derivative exists and then at that point the derivative has to be 0. Okay. Now, what it says this result is that once it has a extrema minimum point, the point of the extrema the derivative will either will not exist or if it exists it must be 0. So, this part way for example, for this if we look the function f x which is equal to mod x on the interval say i which is closed and bounded interval minus 1 to 1. Okay. Then, if you look this graph of the function, the graph of the function will be this, this here is a minus 1, here it is plus 1. So, 0 is a point which is a local minimum point uh, 0. Therefore, uh, 0 the clearly the x equal to 0 is the point of local minimum point. In fact, it is a min, uh, minimum minimum point okay minimum point that is uh, minimum, yeah, minimum minimum point of this the reason is when you take any point closed in the neighborhood of the zero if you picked up any point of this then the value at the point zero will always be less than or equal to value at any point arbitrary point in this neighborhood so zero becomes the minimum point or local minimum we can say but the function f x minus f 0 divided by x as x tends to 0 that is nothing but what mod x by x when x tends to 0 that does not exist that we have already discussed because when x is positive the value will come out to be 1 when x is negative the value will come out to be minus 1. So, the limit does not exist. So, the derivative is not defined it does not exist, but the point correspond to a maximum a minimum point of it. So, this is one of them. Okay. Now, this is the one way we have discussed it okay. that if the function attains the local minima it has to be. So, the criteria are critical points we can say so, as a note the critical point critical points means if the function f is such the set of all points set of points where either uh, derivative does not exist or equal to 0 are known as the critical points. So, obviously, the critical points are only the point where the maximum minimum may occur. So, this is the way of uh, identity if function is given first we will find the derivative if it exists put it equal to 0. So, you will get the set of points which are known as the critical point and then we have to test the local maximum and local minima at this point. It means if the function if uh, the point is not a critical point then there is no question of discussing the crit, uh, maximum minima. In fact, there will be no maximum minima will be occurred at the point other than the critical points. So, that is the important part here. <coughs> now, we come to uh, the result that is called the th generalized mean value theorem.
or also known as Cochise mean value theorem. Cochise mean value theorem. Cochise mean value theorem. What this statement says if <coughs> f and g are continuous real functions real functions on the closed and bounded interval a b which are which are differentiable in the open interval a b then there is a point x belonging to the open interval a b at which f v minus f a over g b minus g a is equal to the derivative of the function f prime x over g prime x f prime x over g prime f. Uh, of course, here we are uh, case we will take up two cases when g b is different from g a and g b is not equal to g a that we will take. So, g b is not equal to g a and they are continuous function and it is where the g b is different from g a okay? uh, derivative will be this. because uh, that we will say it is not required, but we will just put it why it is not required that we will come to uh, when we go for the Rose theorem. In fact, the Rose theorem says that uh, if the g b equal to g a and g is a continuous and differentiable, then there must be some point where the derivative will vanish. So, derivative vanishes means the denominator will be 0. So, it is not defined at all. So, ob obviously, this is true we can say in fact this will come for the okay uh, now here one thing which we can judge we don't require the differentiability of the function f or g at the end point a and b because we don't need we need only the derivative of the function in the interval a b okay in the point interior to a b now uh, let's see the proof of this. Uh, let us consider a function h H t h f of b minus f of a multiplied by g t minus g of b uh, minus g of a g of a into f of t. Okay. Consider this function. Now, to prove our results what we want that there exists a point in order to prove in order to prove the result 1 1 we have we required to show that we required uh, we required to show that there exists that the derivative of the function h this x 0 for some for some x belonging to the open interval this we need it okay so case 1 let us say if our function h is a constant function once it is a constant function then obviously the derivative of this function will be zero for every x belonging to the open interval a b hence the result follows hence result follows okay nothing to prove now case 2 if h is not constant if h is h is or st is not constant okay let us take the two cases 
सपोज एच ऑफ टी सपोज एच ऑफ टी इज ग्रेटर देन एच ऑफ ए फॉर सम टी बिलोंगिंग टू द ओपन इंटरवल ए बी दिस इज अवर क्लोज इंटरवल एंड टी इज समर हियर सो द इमेज ऑफ द टी एट दिस पॉइंट इज से हियर दिस इज अवर एच ए एंड हियर इज समेयर से सपोज एच टी एच टी इज देयर ओके एंड लेट टेक एक लेट एक्स बी ए पॉइंट ऑन द क्लोज इंटरवल ए बी ए बी एट बीच एट बीच एच अटेंड्स इट्स मैक्सिमम इट्स अटेंड्स इट्स मैक्सिमम वैल्यू ओके इट्स अटेंड मैक्सिमम नाउ व्हाई इट इज सो द रीजन इज बिकॉज बिकॉज दिस विल एग्जिस्ट बिकॉज एच इज गिविंग टू बी दिस फंक्शन एच वी हैव डिफाइंड लाइक दिस एफ टी माइनस एफ एच जी टी माइनस जी बी माइनस इन टू एफ टी एफ एंड जी बोथ आर गिविंग टू बी कंटिन्यूस ओवर द क्लोज इंटरवल सो एच विल ऑल्सो बी कंटिन्यूस ओवर द क्लोज इंटरवल ए बी एच जी एंड एफ इज डिफ्रेंशियबल ओवर द ओपन इंटरवल सो एच विल ऑल्सो बी डिफ्रेंशियबल ओवर द ओपन इंटरवल ए बी एंड सिंस एच इज कंटिन्यूस ओवर द क्लोज इंटरवल ए बी एंड क्लोज एंड बाउंड इंटरवल सो it will attain its maximum value and minimum value at least at some point in the interval ab that result we have said every continuous function on a bounded on a closed and bounded set i will attain the maximum or minimum and minimum value at some point so because h is continuous <coughs> on a closed and bounded interval say a b so it will attain it will attain attain at some points attain its maximum and minimum value minimum value over the interval a b over the interval a b that is okay and so we can get it uh, x belongs to this now we have seen here is ab the point x over ab this is first the since we have taken h of t is greater than h of a so obviously obviously the point x will not be a point it will be in the interval a and in a similar way we can say it is lying between ab so x lies between this okay now further the function h is differentiable inside the interval ab differentiable at h point in the interval ab at each point in the interval ab so in particular in particular particular the derivative h prime x exist exist now use the previous theorem the previous theorem says this result we have proved that if the function if f is defined over a closed interval ab and f has a local maximum at some point and the derivative exists then the derivative must be zero so according to the previous theorem so by the previous theorem the derivative of the function at this point must be zero and this will implies that f of b minus f of a is into g prime x is equal to <coughs> g of b Minus g of a into a prime x holds. 
similarly if we zoom if h if h t is less than is less than h of a for some t belonging to the interval a b then the same argument same argument by the same argument then by the same arguments same argument applies to applies to uh, the function h to the function h which attains which attains its maximum value its minimum value sorry minimum at the point x hence we get this implies we get the derivative as dash x will be 0 in a similar one. so derivative of this is and this proves the result ok. So, this is very mm. now this theorem which we call it as generalized mean value theorem in fact it is uh, as a particular case we can drive the uh, our result for this uh, function for uh, Lagrangian mean value theorem and Lorentz theorem. So, next result is we get uh, Lagrange's mean value theorem. What this theorem says is if f is a real uh, continuous function continuous function on the closed interval a b which is differentiable which is differentiable in the open interval a b then there is a point x belonging to the open interval a b at which at which the f of b minus f of a equal to b minus a into the derivative of the function f prime x. The proof follows from the previous in the previous theorem take g x is equal to x and the result follows. So, the result follows immediately then come to the next uh, what is the meaning of this let us the geometrical meaning of the Lagrangian mean value theorem what they search that suppose we have say suppose we have this function f x over the interval say a b say here is a here is suppose I say b ok. Now, uh, uh, let us take another graph because that is very uh, is a and b is ok. Let us take this graph then it is more clear ok. Suppose I take uh, yeah suppose I take this graph ok. Here is say a and this is say b ok. So, this point is correspond to say like this. Now, if I draw the chord joining these points, this is the chord, the slope of this chord of this chord a b is nothing but what f of b minus f of a over b minus a this is the slope of this chord. So, what this result says is that if a function f which is continuous function over the closed interval a b and differentiable in the open interval a b then there will exist a point uh, x in the interval 
a b such that the slope of the segment joining the end point of this curve will be parallel to this line on the curve that is this slope of this and slope of this same this is the slope is equal to f dash x this is the slope of this and here this is the slope so both will coincide so what the this lagrange's mean value theorem is gives that uh, uh, result regarding the slope now this is the case when both fa and fb are equal so we can choose the lowest term later on then. okay now from here we can also drive the results which is known as the Rolle's theorem. The statement of the Rolle's theorem is suppose that f is continuous uh, if f is a real continuous function on the closed and bounded interval a b which is differentiable which is differentiable uh, in the open interval a b uh, which is differentiable in the interval a b and that the value of the function at the end point coincides f a equal to f b and say equal to 0 we can even take it without 0 also it will work 0 then uh, there exist then there exist there exist a point x in the interval a b such that the derivative of the function at this point is 0 the proof follows again from the Lagrange's main value theorem in the Lagrange's Lagrange's case if we take f a equal to f b then implies the derivative of the function must be 0 for some x belonging to the interval a b that is the again the meaning a suppose we have a curve say suppose we have a curve of this type say like this and here is the point a this is the point say b function is continuous and differentiable over the open interval and at the end point both are attending the same value and equal to say 0 then they are according to this there will exist a one point x where the derivative vanishes f dash x will be 0 at this point means the line is parallel to x is of x slope will be 0 slope will be 0. So, this shows the result for them. Okay. Now, uh, using this uh, we can uh, come to now uh, uh, consequence of this uh, mean we can get one more result what this result says is suppose f is continuous suppose f is continuous f is continuous uh, on the close interval close interval i close interval i and f is differentiable and differentiable in the open interval i at each point in the open interval i and the derivative f prime x equal to 0 for every x belonging to the open interval a b then f is a constant function constant and obviously the proof is very simple because we, we apply this uh, theorem lagrange's mean value theorem then over the interval we get uh, ax so proof is 
apply Lagrange's mean value theorem over the interval say a x. Uh, there exists some point uh, say a uh, x is already there. So, let us take the point a by a by okay. a by all a t. Let us take the point a t where the t is uh, lying between a a less than less than b. Okay. t is this over this interval. So, if apply this then what you get is f of t minus f of a equal to t minus a into the derivative. So, there exists a point x belongs to the interval a t which is of course, subset of a b such that this result hold. Okay. Now, if at this point it is 0, but this is given that the derivative vanishes for every x belongs to the interval a b. So, this implies that f of t equal to f of a and for every t, but t is arbitrary, t is arbitrary. So, this implies the function f is constant function and as a consequence of this result we can say as a corollary that suppose f and g are continuous. are continuous on the closed interval a b on the closed interval a b and differentiable and they are differentiable on the open interval a b in the open interval a b and and they satisfy the condition that f prime x equal to g prime x for all x belonging to the interval a b for all x belonging to the interval a b then then there exists a constant c then there exists a constant capital c such that the difference of this is equal to c means they differ by a constant so proof follows immediately so i will not go for this proof further okay now <laughs> using this thing we can also uh, drive the results for the functions which are monotonically increasing and decreasing. So, suppose that suppose f is differentiable f is differentiable in the open interval say a b then the following results holds then number 1 f if a prime x is greater than or equal to 0 for all x belonging to the interval a b then f is monotonically increasing. increasing b if derivative f prime x equal to 0 for all x belonging to the a b then f is constant which is already shown and c is if the derivative of the function is less than or equal to 0 for all x belonging to a b then f is monotonically decreasing decreasing. Okay. The converse is also true here if I take here the converse also hold that if f is monotonically decreasing then the derivative will be negative the converse is holds also hold and here also converse hold hold okay so we can uh, proof is very simple 
just we take the uh, choose the interval say x 1 x 2 uh, choose x 1 x 2 where x 1 and x 2 these are the points of the interval a b for some x being x 1 ok. Then apply apply Lagrange's mean value theorem. Then f of x 2 this is proof for a f of x 2 minus f x 1 is equal to x 2 minus x 1 derivative of the function here for some x belonging to x 1 comma x 2. Okay. Now, it is given the derivative is greater than 0 for all x. So, this is given the derivative a prime x is greater than 0 for all x in the interval a b. So, this implies that f of x 2 is greater than <coughs> or equal to. So, it is greater than or equal to f of x 1 when for all for x 1 satisfying this condition x 2 is greater than x 1. Okay. So, this shows the function f is monotonically increasing function okay. monotonically increasing function. The converse of this also true the converse of it the converse also hold also holds why because suppose f is differentiable suppose that f is differentiable f is differentiable and increasing and increasing monotonically increasing in the interval i or on the interval i which is say our a b i is the interval a b okay? on the interval i. Now, take a point for any point for any point t which is different from x in i we have uh, we have f t minus f x over t minus x. Okay. Now, if I take this, this is the point x, here I am taking an interval suppose and t is point somewhere here. If t is in this interval, then x is greater than t. So, t minus x will be negative, is it not? t minus x will be, uh, sorry, uh, this limit of this limit of this when t tends to x because this limit exists it is differentiable and it is the derivative of the function at a point x and since it is monotonically uh, increasing so f t will be less than f x. Uh, so, since f is monotonically increasing so f of t is less than f of x for t lying between this say interval a b here. Okay. So, this is less than 0, this one will be less than 0. So, this entire thing will be greater than equal to 0. So, it is greater than equal to 0. If t lies between this interval, then what happen? This will be if when t lies in in, in this interval, then already t minus x that is equal to what? Uh, this will be greater than equal to 0 because uh, x will be here, is it not? So, we can write it f t is a uh, f of x is less than f t. So, this is positive, this is positive. So, this holds. So, basically this holds, this holds <coughs> therefore, the result follows. Therefore, result follows. Similarly, for the second case, we can go. So, we are not going to. 
Now here is a remark we can say a function f f is said to be strictly increasing strictly increasing on an interval say i if for any points for any points x1 comma x2 in i such that x1 is strictly less than x2 then we have we have f of x1 is strictly less than f of x2 then we say the function is strictly increasing now when we prove the converse part of the previous result the note is the converse part of the previous theorem the converse part of the previous theorem is not true that is if the function is strictly increasing function that you cannot say that derivative will be strictly greater than 0 ok but strictly greater than 0 for example if we take the function f x which is x cube from r to r is strictly increasing increasing on r but the derivative of the function at a point 0 is 0. Okay. So, what we say the function will not be strictly. So, here here the function f prime a x is strictly greater than is not satisfied though the function is strictly increasing function. So, that is the important point which I will. Second remark which I wanted to give it and it is interesting also the remark says when we say the function is increasing at a point at a point then it has no meaning uh, then it means there exists some neighborhood in which the function is increasing. So, when we say a function a function is said to be increasing increasing at a point if there is if there is a neighborhood neighborhood of the point of the point on which on which the function is the function is increasing on which the function is in q. Okay. So, uh, at increasing means if the derivative is strictly positive then the function is increasing at this point this is also new. But, just by looking the derivative at a point we cannot decide, but just by looking the derivative of the function f x at the point at the point we cannot decide it is increasing or decreasing character or decreasing character that is that is if when we say uh, that is when we say the function is at this point. Uh, so, if the derivative if the derivative is strictly positive positive at a point at a point uh, then the function is then the function is increasing at this point uh, is this supposition is false then one cannot one cannot say that the function is 
strictly increasing function is increasing increasing at that point. For example, suppose I take a function g x which is defined as x plus 2 x square sin of 1 by x if x is not equal to 0 and equal to 0 if x is equal to 0. Okay. Now, this function the derivative of the function g prime 0 the derivative g prime 0 is g x minus g 0 over x minus 0 limit x tends to 0. So, that comes out to be what 1 plus limit of this x sin 1 by x as x tends to 0 and this limit comes out to 0. So, we get g prime 0. So, g prime 0 is 0 which is strictly positive, but this function this function <coughs> g is not increasing in any neighborhood of 0 neighborhood of 0. Okay. Uh, it cannot be this can be seen easily suppose this is the neighborhood of 0 and I take this neighborhood consider the point say here the point I am choosing as x equal to 1 by 2 n pi and also here another points I am taking as uh, uh, so sorry it is positive. So, let us take oh, it is ok let us take another point uh, x is equal to 1 by 4 n plus 1 pi by 2. Now, both these point clearly choose x such that x is either this or this then then the x goes to x tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. So, these are the point in the neighborhood of 0. So, x belongs to the neighborhood of 0 with a suitable radius say delta that I am not but what is our function the function derivative of the function the derivative g prime x what is this value. Uh, uh, if we look the derivative uh, the function g prime uh, 1 upon 2 n pi what is the function is this. Okay. So, when at this point when you find the derivative of this g dash x g dash x uh, is function because the derivative g is g is this function x plus 2 x square sin 1 by x when x is not equal to 0. So, when you differentiate it directly you get 1 plus 4 x sin 1 by x plus 2 x square cosine of 1 by x into minus 1 by x square is it not. Now, the value this g prime x comes out to be 1 plus 4 x sin 1 by x and minus 2 times cos 1 by x. Okay. Now, you see if I take at x equal to 1 by 2 n pi the derivative g prime x this is the any integral multiple of sin is 0. So, sin 1 by x becomes 0. So, this part is not there cos of 1 by x cos of 1 by x when you take the multiple of pi 2 pi then it is always be cos 0 is 0 cos 2 pi is 1. So, it is always be 1. So, value will be minus 1. So, it will be negative for at this point and if we take x equal to 1 by 4 n plus 1 pi by 2 then in that case what happens is uh, at this point the function g dash x g has a derivative has derivative negative. So, at this point the function g has derivative derivative 
that is d prime x will be positive. Why it is positive? Let us see. If you look the full odd multiple of pi by 2 with n is equal to 1 to 3. So, in fact, when n is 1 5 pi by 2 7 pi by 2 and so on. So, this will be odd multiple of pi by 2 this will go to 0. So, there and here it will give the positive values 1 is it not. So, we are always getting the positive value. So, this is always good positive when n is a positive integer n belongs to n n belongs to n. So, it is positive therefore, in the neighborhood of the 0 in the neighborhood of 0 the derivative is negative as well as positive. So, neither you can say it is increasing function nor it is decreasing function although the function which we have taken uh, g prime is 0 at the point 0. So, what conclusion is if the derivative of a function at certain point is positive or negative we cannot conclude its increasing nature or decreasing nature until, uh, until we are sure that in the neighborhood the function has a character for increasing or decreasing that is all. Thank you very much.